I'm pretty sure every astrophotographer out there would agree with me that there's something weirdly exciting about putting a camera lens on a cooled astronomy camera. It's almost like something you're not supposed to do, but it unlocks secret powers of extra field of view and super fast optics that are uh, perfect out to full frame, but that's not always the case and it takes a little bit of work to get set up sometimes, and in this video I wanted to show you how I got my wide field setups with Canon lenses set up. Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Today I just wanted to show you guys how to actually get a cool astronomy camera set up to use for astrophotography with Canon lenses. So this video, I'm just gonna focus on ZWO cameras because I'm assuming that's what most of you people have as cameras. So as far as adapters go, it actually gets pretty confusing on their website because uh, because of the different camera models, the various back focuses, whether or not you have a filter wheel or not, things change quite a bit. So there's actually a couple different adapters that you have to pick specifically for your camera. And I have two of such adapters here with me right now. So for most of you, you are probably using a, uh, like an ASI 1600, a 2600, uh, 533, the smaller ASI cameras. and those all have one standard adapter if you're not using a filter wheel, a pretty long one. Um, I'll post a link to it right here. Uh, if you're using a filter wheel camera, there is a specific adapter for that. So this is an example of a ASI 183mm with an EOS T2 adapter specifically for filter wheels. So the way it sets up is you'll have the camera, the filter wheel, and the back spacing is already set properly with this specific adapter. Now this adapter only works up to the 2600 uh, mm. It does not work for the full frame cameras. And for that, you'll need something else. But for the full frame cameras, there is a, a, a different adapter here, and this is a, a 6200 MC. And it actually has a, a, a filter drawer adapter so you can insert you know, whatever filters you're using at the time into this. At this point, I don't think there's an adapter to physically take a filter wheel with a full frame camera yet. There might be eventually, but there doesn't exist one right now. The other option, probably I think the only other existing option on the market, which isn't even available right now, is the Astro Mechanics adapter, which will let you control basically any lens, even if they're autofocus, well, especially if they're autofocus and they make a specific adapter for the 6200 or the 2400, any full frame camera and or filter wheel. But the problem is they're located in Russia and they aren't actually fulfilling orders right now. So that's the only other option basically. <laughs> so in terms of what camera lenses you have the option of going with, of course there's infinite options, but some are better than others, especially when it comes to full frame imaging and stuff that's actually affordable compared to a telescope. So again, depending on what camera you have and what adapter you have, there are different options as to what you can go with. If you are using, well actually, yeah, if you're using a Canon adapter, obviously you can use every Canon lens. Uh, there's many good Canon lenses. I've used this with uh, fisheye lenses, I've used it with 14 millimeter lenses, and my most predominant lens that I use is the Rokinon 135. And the reason that I use this lens over pretty much anything else for anything astrophotography related is that it's super cheap and it's pretty much better than almost any other 135 lens on the market for astrophotography, especially operating wide open. I almost have ideal stars all the way to the corners in full frame using this lens wide open uh, compared to many other different Canon lenses. And it's just a well-suited focal length in general um, for a lot of objects in the sky and a lot of targets you could choose to go for so in general, um, most people will have one of these anyways. If you're watching this video, you're most likely uh, <laughs> using a Rokinon 135 or own one. And it's just a common lens that people use with cool astronomy cameras. So again, you could use it with uh, the smaller cameras or you could use it with the full frame cameras. And I'll show you my uh, inspector image of um, an image I've taken through this lens wide open and you'll be able to see it's pretty uh, satisfactory for being wide open and i'm likely going to step this down a little bit when it actually goes out to the remote observatory um, just because 
But yeah, the Rock on a 135, it's hard to beat uh, as a lens for astrophotography in general. So if you don't have one, I recommend getting one. And if you're thinking of getting a lens to actually do cool astronomy cameras with, I would recommend it by far. Not only because it's a good lens, but it also has, um, again, a lot of infrastructure around it. Like you can just order 3D printed parts, a 3D printed bracket, a focus mount. You don't have to custom build anything. There's turnkey solutions that already exist for the lens because it's so popular. It's just the best option out there. So the other thing that you need to think about is how you're actually gonna mount this to your mount, which is honestly a pretty big struggle as well. So there's a couple different options and it depends on what kind of lens you're using, especially. Um, most of you out there are probably just like me and you'll have a Rockinon 135 millimeter lens. I actually own two of them because I'm kind of obsessed. For the ZWO cameras, the smaller ones, they make this camera holder. I think they probably make one for the larger cameras as well. But this is kind of a shaky way to mount the 135, the Rockinon, because it's pretty heavy. And this isn't the most stable setup, especially if you're using a filter wheel. You know, there's always the risk that you're going to have flex in the image train that's gonna mess with your pictures. So this isn't the best solution. Um, it is pretty convenient if you're using a Star Adventure or a Tracker, but I'm not too much of a fan of it. And the other issue is you can't really autofocus with this. There are some people out there who jerry-rig custom solutions with different adapters and rings, and that's really difficult to do, but some people get it working. But I just wanted to show you guys what I went with here, and I'm not sponsored by these people at all. Um, I have a 3D printed ring set for the Rockin' on 135. This is from Astrodymium. And it's also got some accessory clamps on it, so I have a guide scope, and it has the mounting for the ZWO autofocuser, and it's got a belt autofocuser on it as well. So it's a pretty uh, turnkey setup for getting this whole thing um, functioning almost like a totally automated telescope would be. And on the bottom here, I just have the, uh, I have a dovetail plate, a short one. This one came with the Radian 61 and it kind of fits this whole setup pretty well. So that's what I'm going with. Anyways, I also have a 6200 on the back. And what a lot of you people may be wondering is, is it even viable to actually put a full frame cooled camera on the back of these? Because there are a lot of manufacturing issues with stability in terms of tip tilt of the cameras. So that's the main struggle, is whether or not you're even going to be able to image wide open with your system and get the most efficiency out of it. I got kind of lucky because I have two good copies of the Rockin' on 135, so straight out of the gate, they're already pretty stable, but they did require um, a little bit of tip tilt to actually, you know, get perfect, especially with the, uh, the full frame sensor with the very small pixels. So the nice thing about the full frame cameras is they already have tip tilt push pull screws on the front and those can be adjusted manually. Um, you can use something like Aztap or a CCD inspector to measure the actual tip tilt of your system. I tend to use CCD inspector. That's just kind of what I learned on and just give it like a good night of messing with it and eventually you'll be able to get it very good. Um, if you're going to be imaging full frame with a camera lens, you can't expect it to be good right off the bat because they can't really square the sensors perfectly all the time uh, straight out of the factory for these cameras. So you kind of have to go in with it expecting that you're going to have to do some adjustment no matter what. And then, you know, if you keep your expectations reasonable, then you can get it to a point where it's good. I also have an autofocuser on this, and this is kind of annoying to set up at least in terms of getting this positioned in the clamp and locked down, it's a bit annoying, but it actually functions pretty well. Um, there is a bit of backlash. If you guys are familiar with the, if any of you have ZWO EFs, it was like 150 steps of backlash. But once you measure that, you can cancel it out with backlash compensation, it's pretty easy. So once you at least get it set up and get it tuned, it's actually like a very, 
viable way to do astrophotography. One of the most common questions that people ask when they're actually trying to pick a camera to use with a 135mm lens or a camera lens is do you go one shot color or do you go mono? And that is a lot dependent on what your goals are. So I'll tell you why I went with what I went with. I went with a color camera. And the reason being is I intend to use this for all sky survey type mosaics. And if you have ever attempted anything like that before in color, you know that it's incredibly difficult if you're shooting it in black and white on a mono camera. And it's way faster to do if you're using one shot color because you get all the colors at the same time and the gradients are more consistent throughout the image. Of course, that kind of removes your ability to do narrow band in a big way, but if you're in dark skies, then it kind of makes sense to just go one shot color if you're doing mosaics because you can get all the colors at once and you're almost guaranteed to have an image. Um, and I think that's especially valuable if you're traveling and using this as kind of a, a portable traveling rig. You don't want to drive out all some way to a dark sky site and then find out you missed a color channel for one of your mosaic panels or something stupid. This kind of is stupid proof um, to a lot of those gear issues, which is good. And if you ever did decide that you wanted to do narrowband, you could theoretically pop in a dual narrowband filter and get HA and O3. You won't be able to split away S2 for a classic narrowband image, but it's still better than nothing. I intend to use this at a remote observatory. So if I wanted to use a filter wheel on this full frame camera, I couldn't. I would have to uh, <laughs> ask someone to switch out my filters through a filter drawer every time I wanted to change, which is not very fun when you're uh, several hundred miles away from your scope. So that was the main guiding decision behind that. If you did want to do narrowband though, and you had a smaller camera, like uh, not one of the full frame cameras, you could totally do that and it would work pretty well. So if you're not using a full frame, it's pretty simple to just use the filter wheel. But if you are using full frame, things kind of get complicated and you're kind of forced to uh, go towards the color route unless you use a different adapter like the Astro Mechanics, which again, you can't find anywhere right now because they're in Russia. So before I close out the video, I just want to show you guys a couple of example images I've actually captured with the, uh, the Rocketon 135 and 6200 MC setup just to give you an idea of what's possible and maybe give you guys some ideas for images you could be taking with uh, your setup. So <clears throat> what I use mine primarily for is just shooting huge mosaics. So this image is one such example. Here is a, a, a 12 panel mosaic I shot from Utah uh, at about 8,000 feet elevation, pretty high, a uh, very, very dark site. It's that Strawberry Reservoir for those of you living in Salt Lake. Anyways, this 12 panel mosaic only had like 15 minutes worth of 30 second exposures per panel so not that deep but what you get for having such a fast wide lens is you can pick up a ton of signal really really fast just in one night so if you're trying to do high resolution milky way stuff it really is kind of a no-brainer to go this route because you get an h alpha sensitive camera that's cooled it's low noise and then you get the super fast wide optics to go with it and it's just kind of a perfect setup um, here is another image which is pretty similar to the other one this one was shot from Kanab, utah this one's only a four panel mosaic and you probably wouldn't even be able to tell if i told you but three of these panels have 50 minutes of exposure and one of them only has 19 minutes and I'm betting you couldn't even tell the difference and I can't either honestly because <laughs> I couldn't see any artifacts of the one noisy panel at all when I was editing so again it's just kind of the power of a super wide fast lens especially with a cooled camera 